Greetings everyone. This is an earthquake watch for November 26 through to November 30. Just recapping recent seismic activities. We did receive a 6.1 earthquake in Papua New Guinea a few days ago. That was the largest quake for a few weeks. But it's been a predominantly quiet month for magnitude of earthquakes. We haven't seen a lot of large events. But I'm expecting some large events to come during the watch period. Perhaps one about 6.8 in magnitude. We'll have a quick look at the GOES X-ray flux monitor and what we're looking at here is a significant change in the actual bands. The actual bands are merging now and this is the first time this year that this has been recorded and that represents a weakness of the Earth's magnetic field. And we're also seeing a very quiet period of spike activity, almost non-existent X-ray spikes and that indicates that there is a strong likelihood that the Earth's magnetic field is at a, at a weak state and that would indicate it's very susceptible to some large earthquakes. Ok, we'll have a quick look now at the LASCO C3 from SOHO and we're going to see several CMEs and some very large halo CMEs that we need to closely monitor. Now, the first of the CMEs was recorded on the 22nd of February, another one on the 23rd of February and another one on the 24th and we're in the progress of receiving some more so here's the first CME that was recorded on the 22nd uh, we're now seeing the one on the 23rd very large halo CME and that will represent a very large subtropical storm another CME on the 24th and just on the 25th we've just seen another one so although the x-ray activity is fairly quiet we are seeing a very significant amount of CME activity on the sun at the moment Okay, this will be the last imagery uh, or the last data before we look at the imagery and we can see here the solar winds and they're sitting at fairly high levels at 450 kilometers per second and that's fairly high and as we can see we did receive a, a very large very large uh, solar winds on November the 15th and the earthquakes tend to be before and after the stream of um, right here so that indicates to me that once the x-rays and the solar winds um, slide down we should be receiving some earthquakes so I'm expecting this to happen during the watch period okay we'll have a look at some stills now and we have the 193 angstrom and we can see some fairly predominant coronal holes here that we need to monitor and match and we can see an eruption on the sun a magnetic filament erupted and perhaps the area where the CME activity um, we'll also see this a little bit better with the moving in, uh, imagery the SDO shortly. There's also another filament still attached to the Sun and this may also let go and it is earth facing at the moment and does represent a bit of a risk. We'll have a quick look at the solar, uh, the southern hemisphere now and we can see some fairly large coronal holes that we need to monitor also and we'll get a better look with a dif different angstrom. And we can see the 171 angstrom these holes don't appear to be too deep, they're fairly shallow and that would indicate a potentially large event very close to the surface and these represent a very very large danger and I'll be mapping and matching this shortly. The actual northern hemisphere events look to be fairly deep coronal holes and they also need to be monitored as well. Okay we're looking at the XRT on solar monitor and we've got this sunspot region and a coronal hole in and behind and this is sitting at about 24 degrees north latitude and we may be receiving an event in this although this image is about two days old there may be an event in here and this is the very large coronal feature that I will that I will be mapping and that's sitting at 27 degrees so these are the two main features and the two main holes that I've targeted for this watch period okay I've targeted a volcano in the Ryuki Islands region and that's the Suwari Nojima volcano and it's actually been activated from uh, 18th of November and what we may be seeing is a foreshock of a larger event so this could this could actually erupt again so there's a high risk for this event and that's sitting in the Ryuki Islands region. My second area of concern would be around the Benin Islands and slightly lower to the Volcano Islands region there is a string of volcanoes also in the vicinity and this also represents a large risk. My third area of concern would be the Gulf of California region and it does appear that uh, the feature did match the Gulf of California about three days ago but the coronal hole has changed shape into a more circular um, coronal feature 
and that doesn't match now. Um, but I did have my eye on this three days ago, uh, so this will be the third on my list for watch. And my last area for the Northern Hemisphere of concern would be the Canary Islands region, and this is probably the most dangerous of the lot. And although it does sit slightly higher at 29.5 degrees or 28, so there is a there is a slight similarity, but it just doesn't appear that the coronal features match entirely. Um, but this area is in play. Okay, we'll have a quick look at the solar monitor and switch now to the SDO. And what we can see is, and we can just see it on the very top, we can see uh, an interesting filament eruption above and some CME activity and flares in this above region, above the coronal hole. There's a lot of interesting activity just above uh, the actual sunspot region. And there's a lot of activity here and it's quite abnormal. I haven't seen this sort of activity. We do see the SEO camera shake also. I'm going to be concentrating on the southern hemisphere right now. And we can see some very large coronal features right here. And there's a lot of activity and a lot of movement, whereas the northern hemisphere seems to be fairly stagnant and still. There's a lot of activity here and a lot of areas that we need to monitor. And the actual solar winds were directed in the southerly direction, which will indicate the potential of some large earthquakes in this region. There are three events that I've, ex that I've predicted for the Southern Hemisphere, that I've matched them, mapped for the Southern Hemisphere, and the I'm expecting them to be over 5.5 in magnitude, and the first one would be the Sandwich Island region, and I'm expecting a 5.5 is possible in and around the Trench region, and it has been activated the last few months, so there is a high probability that we would be getting something around south 59 degrees. And my main area of concern for the southern hemisphere and for this watch period would be the Chile region. And there is a potential of a 6.8 magnitude event and the solar features tend to match this quite well. So there is a high probability from my mapping and matching that bio bio Chile around about 36 degrees south latitude um, could be the target area for this large quake. And that would be the main concern and the main watch for the Southern Hemisphere. And my last area is the Comatic Islands region, which is just underneath Tonga and above New Zealand. And it seems to be around about south 28 degrees is where I've targeted. And that'll put it slightly underneath the Loyalty Islands region, slightly out of that range. And could also be the uh, Easter Island region as well. But I think that this area is probably more of a match and it does seem it does seem more probable that this region will be the area affected so those are my areas and mapped and matched okay that is my earthquake watch for this week thanks for watching